What is the meaning of life? This is the ultimate question that drives us, is it not? This is the ultimate quest of New Wapu. The what, why, where, when and how of our very existence. What did we come from? Why did we come into being? Where did we come from? When did we come, and how? The question does not just apply to humans but also to the great phenomena of the world in general. Well, in the world of time and material manifestation, we can derive at many conclusions through objective observation when talking about where and when. But as for the what, why, and how, these are faculties of the workings of the brain. However, scientists are yet to come up with an apparatus that can accurately and consistently measure the why aspects of existence, the meanings. The what, the how and the why can thus be categorized as the three main levels of intelligence. Logical intelligence, the what of things, emotional intelligence, the how of things, and spiritual intelligence, the why of things. Each of these intelligences has its own neuron programming in the brain. But with the exception of the why, the spiritual intelligence, the other two levels can be measured and quantified. Logical intelligence is based on synaptic transmission, the firing of our neurons as they correspond with each other, in terms of recollecting memory. This is easy to test and can be measured, with methods such as IQ testing. Emotional intelligence is different, it is based on our ability to associate specific sensations with persons, places, things or circumstances etc. For instance, a specific smell may remind you of someone you once loved, and, may then connect you to a time spent in the West Indies, then to hopes and aspirations, and so on. Emotional intelligence therefore involves more of what we call the self. One way to assess and measure your emotional intelligence is by how proficient you are at creating rapport and empathy with a new friend or potential client. This is the faculty of yourself that sniffs out others to see if they share qualities, ideals, and beliefs with you. Now, in considering the spiritual intelligence, no form of apparatus will ever be able to test how one can be happy, or how one can become successful, or how to become more creative. In fact these are not even how questions, they are actually why questions. Since most of us are not in tune with our spiritual intelligence, we have made our why questions into how questions. How, is a process of engaging the highest aspect of the self, hence new wapu. New wapu is an unlimited field of intelligence that we call spiritual intelligence. It helps us to develop a sense of self that is not based on ideas, views, opinions or experiences. It is beyond character, it is beyond the mind and ego. The self, through new wapu, is the natural genius of living that everyone is heir to. This is why it is impossible to co-relate specific brain activity with spiritual intelligence. Left and right brain functions are respectively logical and emotional intelligences. But spiritual intelligence is a faculty that unifies these lower two. Spiritual intelligence is therefore activated when both hemispheres of the brain are united as one cortex function. Modern scientists are now beginning to understand this. Neuroscientists tend to talk about the what and why pathways of the brain, but the how pathways are not present in the same way. It is suggested that the, how, is a presence that is generated by spirit whenever it is summoned, i.e., whenever we dysfunction the thought process. It is generated afresh each time and is only noticeable when observing inexplicable wholeness of brain activity. Living the life you love to live is about choice. True choices can only be made in the present now, when you dysfunction the thought process. You choose the lifestyle you desire to have and you declare it moment to moment. You make it a reality in each and every moment of your life, by way of living in constant prayer, then, by advancing on to mental repetitive affirmations, and, finally by decree. How therefore, is the faculty of spirit? This is you spiritual science, the science of manifestation through New Wapu. Acknowledging the spiritual science of New Wapu, through the principles that govern human behavior, empowers us to integrate the left and right hemispheres of the brain. New Wapu unites the logical and emotional faculties of our behavior and activates the higher intelligence of spirit. The spiritual principles of life, connects us to a presence of awareness and being, which is beyond all logical and emotional associations. The principles of New Wapu, aligns us with a profound spiritual intelligence that refreshes the parts of life, no other intelligences can reach. The universe is composed of energy, which we translate as waves of particles at specific frequencies. And, each principle is essentially a specific frequency or energy band, which we can potentially tap into at will. When we become present to the essence of life, we become aware of, and are empowered by these principles, of life. The myths and legends of the ancient worlds would often represent these principles, energy bands, in an anthropomorphic manner. Meaning, the folklore would tell stories that represented these principles as gods and goddesses. Ancestral reverence was consequently created. 
ancestral reverence, in another context, simply celebrated the continuity of spirit as it personalizes and propagates itself through descendants after descendants. Spirit is the force of life itself. And, in answer to the foregoing question of what is the meaning of life, life is simply what you make it. Life within itself is essentially and fundamentally meaningless. The lower levels of intelligence are the aspects of our being that give meaning to life. These meanings are based on ideas, views, opinions or experiences, as stated above. The higher self does not associate being, with time, circumstances or meanings. Each neuron cell within the brain can process information from about 144,000 different sources. And, that the solar plexus area within the body is a junction of nerve ganglia consisting of about 144,000 nerve channels. Of which the majority of them are dormant. These 144,000 nerve channels are therefore the recipients of 144,000 potential characteristics of the human family. We can go on to say that each one of these 144,000 characteristics represents some finite degrees of basic principles. We have principles that are fourfold, four-dimensional, giving us 144, times 1,000 possible scenarios equaling 144,000. There are other very significant ways that we can arrive at the 144,000 figure. Firstly, the figure itself is actually in two parts. It is represented by the 12 cranial nerves of the brain and their 12 overtones, or spiritual counterparts. Therefore, 12 by 12 gives us 144, times 1000 possible scenarios equaling 144,000. Meditate on this reality for a moment or two. Purification is about the cleansing of your aura. Your aura is like a protective shield of energy that surrounds your body. There are various aspects of the body, that, through excellent health they emit a radiance of light that produces the aura, such as the endocrinal glands. All manifestations of fear, such as grief, hurt, anger or jealousy contributes toward blocking chakra energy. This results in ill health of the endocrine system, and therefore the body is susceptible to low vibrational levels and stuck energy. To purify your being thus begins with your giving up your identifications with fear-based energy. None of this exists in the present now. I am cleansed, purified and divinely protected within the sphere of my aura. Your task is to rid yourself of unresolved issues. If you are ill, are in shock, or are in a negative vibration, your aura will be mucky and may even be non-existent in those moments. You must be free of all negative complaints. When your aura is totally clean and pure, no harm can befall you, no negative vibrations or situations can penetrate it. Fear and shock lets in damage or danger, whilst purity confers safety. If you have negative thoughts or feelings, write them down and then burn them. Positive thoughts and feelings should be celebrated. Share them with others. A purified person is of a higher light frequency and is therefore of a higher consciousness. Consciousness is a screen that fitters your view of reality. To lack consciousness is to function with someone else's view of reality, or, to function within the ego's tendency to perpetuate time. That is, to accept a view of reality according to the eyes of another, other than yourself. The way toward the superconscious, which is beyond mind and ego, is to remove as many filters as possible. Your objective is to attain a complete view of reality, to attain consciousness of consciousness itself. Purity of mind and heart is the key to raising awareness. I am present to all that is, and all levels of consciousness are present with me. Sometimes the best reaction to heated situations is to not react at all. Try it and observe what happens. Observe your thoughts and how they make you feel, without judgment. Remember, the less we identify with our thoughts and our emotions, the more conscious we become of self. So do not judge or analyze. Your intention is to become the ultimate observer. The higher forces, the angelic ones, will bless you with wisdom and understanding when you raise consciousness beyond mind and become present to them. So, raise your consciousness in order to receive the highest blessings. A true blessing is an invocation of divine favor. To be blessed is to be favored. It is to be consecrated or glorified. Equally, to give blessings to others is to give favor, to consecrate and to glorify them. Blessings received gracefully do not remove things in return, they become additions or bonuses on top of what you already have. Likewise, a true blessing given is not with the intention of receiving something in return. Blessings are a sign of grace, give and receive them with passion. I am too blessed to be stressed I am open, to the divine blessings of the universe. To prepare yourself for the blessings of the universe, you must be ready to accept the lessons that are to come with them. Else, the angelic ones will pick up on you not being ready, and hold back. If you wish to be blessed with the perfect partner, you must first learn the lesson of becoming the perfect partner yourself, and, if you wish to receive wealth in abundance, you must first learn the lessons of unconditional giving. Bless everyone around you and fill them with divine energy and you will be open to the blessings of the universe. 
You must celebrate with joy and gratitude when you receive blessings. Gratitude is giving thanks from your heart. When you express gratitude from your heart, you transmit energy from your being that invokes certain responses from others and from the universe. You must be sincere. If you feel you ought to be grateful, your words and thoughts will not have the same effect. Heartfelt gratitude is the key to abundance. It unlocks the great reservoirs of the universe. Judgment, envy and criticism on the other hand put you in hell. They are the opposite of gratitude and appreciation. I am grateful to my creator for the sake of my appreciation of life itself. Your first exercise of gratitude ought to be one of showing your parents appreciation for giving you life. In retrospect, you may also thank the ancestors. The ancestors connect us with the angelic ones and ultimately with God. There may be someone in your life you do not get along with. Find all the good aspects about him or her. Focus on these and show appreciation. Practice appreciation consciously. It is the breeze that can fan the tiniest spark into a great fire. When you appreciate even the tiniest thing in a person or situation, it grows. Appreciation and gratitude give us blessings and strengthens us in faith. Faith is transcendental energy. It makes the impossible become possible. Faith allows miracles to happen, like the faith of a mustard seed. If you have 100% faith in an outcome, it will come about, regardless. To the extent of your doubts, you allow in the possibility of failure. When you have absolute, implicit, total trust in the divine, you will know that whatever is for the greatest good for all will happen. Faith means to be constantly listening to the divine within, and to become one with it. When you have 100% faith in the divine, you can make decrees, a cut above affirmations. I am totally empowered in faith. I stand with the powers that be. I am the possibility of possibility. Practice having 100% faith in yourself and in God. If you are deciding upon an agenda to produce a specific measurable result, be sure to choose the outcome from the space of the present now. This means you must practice living life based upon the now, as opposed to being based upon past experiences, etc. Focusing on the past or making decisions based upon the past limits you. Having 100% faith in yourself and God is enforced by your raising your awareness of being beyond the limitations that the mind and ego impose upon you. Without faith and indeed integrity, you are limited in how much grace you receive from others and from God. Grace is a divine exemption from penalty. It dissolves karma and creates miracles. Grace is an energy band available for us to tap into. Its frequency is very close to that of blessings. We can give and receive grace, just as we give and receive blessings at our own will. When we align with these energy bands, we can end pain, illness, misery, famine, and wars. Our soul has accepted the challenge of incarnating on planet Earth at this time to either give or receive grace and indeed blessings. It is up to you then to choose your position, or at least align with your higher self to recall your mandate to memory. Negative karma does not have to be endured. You can dissolve it through the grace of God. I am the manifestation of compassion, empathy, and unconditional love. I align with the universal qualities that confer grace. Every time you open your heart with compassion, empathy, and love unconditionally, you emanate an energy that grants someone else grace. The universe also grants you an inflow of divine love in the process. So why not take this on as your way of being? By invoking and conferring grace, you can transmute negative emotions, heal relationships, and the physical body. Through the power of grace then, you defy karma. Forgiveness is another divine energy that also dissolves karma. Forgiveness is a divine energy that allows damaged relationships to heal. High frequency vibrations of love, such as the energy band of forgiveness, transmute the lower vibrations of fear and pain. This allows healing of broken relationships to occur. Forgiveness releases stuck energy. It clears out negative emotions and allows newer, more positive and happier ones to flow in. Without forgiveness, we become stuck, we become incomplete and therefore imprisoned inside a vicious circle of bad tempers and bad feelings. I am the possibility of completion and forgiveness. I align with the divine energies of grace and peace. When we forgive others, we create peace. We give and receive grace. Practice forgiveness for the sake of peace. All divine principles are energy based. When we align with specific principles, we align with a quality of God that confers healing, guidance and fulfillment. Practice aligning with as many principles as possible. By default, you are constantly at the grace of God's forgiveness. You enter God's presence. To be present is to acknowledge your oneness with all that is and to observe without judgment or analysis. The present now is the bosom of God. It is void of mind and ego. The ego fears the present since it is dysfunctional therein. It is only concerned about past and future. It relies on past memories in order to create a future and salvation for itself. The ultimate fear of the ego is therefore death. To dysfunction time and thinking is to kill the ego temporarily. 
To become present then, is to attain oneness with the Creator. I am present to all that is, I am therefore eternally connected to my Source. Stop thinking, by dysfunction the thought process, you unite the left and right hemispheres of the brain. You then enter the highest level of intelligence of spirit, which is beyond logical and emotional intelligence. It is to become one with the Creator. To be present is to be in the world but not of it. It is to be present to a situation but not be bothered or consumed by it. If you get caught in a heated argument, transform and become the observing presence, as though it were someone else arguing, not you. Give and receive grace from the present moment. Live your life in constant forgiveness, you will be endowed with universal love. When you are present, you are living the life you love to live. 1 Corinthians 15 51, Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Right knowledge leads to right wisdom, right wisdom leads to right thinking, and right thinking leads to right action.